consider the most well-known psalm to be? And what would the first line of that psalm be? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he came up with Psalm 23, which begins, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The fourth Sunday of Easter is called Good Shepherd Sunday. This is because in the three-year cycle, we're always reading from St. John's Gospel in chapter 10, where Jesus talks about the Good Shepherd. Throughout this chapter, Jesus explains to those around him including the Jewish leaders, what a good shepherd is, what a good leader looks like, and he testifies that he is that good shepherd. Sitting with the gospel this past week, preparing for my homily, three terms came to mind. Ownership, relationship, and trust. Ownership. Jesus tells us in the gospel The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep. So, the good shepherd, he does own the sheep, and ownership can make a difference. Remember as a child, maybe that was a special toy that was yours. Maybe it was your first bike, your first computer, or maybe a special book that you owned. You probably took extra special care of it, more than the book that you borrowed from the library, because it was yours. And that made a difference. The same can be said maybe further along when you purchased your first car or your first home. Now, when it comes to people, the concept of ownership is unsettling. We don't own people. It brings to mind the evils of slavery or trafficking. I trust you realize that's not what I mean here. I don't own my wife, nor would I want to. Yet, she still is my wife. And for parents, Our children are a gift from God. Whether they were given to us naturally or by adoption, we still call them our children. And we know that typically makes a difference. How much more we will sacrifice for our own spouse, our children, our own families. Because of flawed human nature, that might not be the case for everyone here. And my heart and prayers go out to those who may be in difficult family situations. Yet, we are God's creation, and he created us. And when he completed creating us, we were not just good, but very good. And through baptism, we are his adopted children. And that's what happened today to these young people who will be baptized. They will become God's adopted children. We are his, we belong to him, ownership, Belonging makes a difference. Relationship. There is a different relationship between the hired hand and the sheep and the shepherd and the sheep. The shepherd has a vested interest in his flock. A vested interest is defined as having a personal stake or involvement, a special relationship. A business owner has a special relationship with his own business, a personal stake, and interest in the business that he owns. And as parents, we have a special relationship, a personal stake, and an interest in our own children. And what is even more amazing is the fact that our God has a special relationship and interest in each and every one of us. He will not run away at the first sign of danger or trouble, unlike the hired hand. And here is another way that relationship is different. The hired hand, he knows about sheep, but the good shepherd knows his sheep. The employee may know about the business, but the good business owner knows his business. And the babysitter may know about children, but good parents know their children. Ownership and relationship have an interplay with each other. My first job after college was performing preventative maintenance on computers, back when they filled a room and they needed a lot of regular maintenance. With guidance, I was able to set up my parts van the way I wanted to, the way that worked for me. I was able, I was given a list of customers to visit, but I made the schedule when to visit them. I was able to work out when I could start in the morning and when I would go home, when I would replenish my parts, 
when I was in the office, when I was on the road. I was given ownership of my job. Looking back, I can see the wisdom of my manager, letting me do this with guidance, of course, instead of telling me in every step along the way and every task I had to do. And because I took ownership, I felt and I was more responsible for the outcome. I had more of a vested interest. The relationship between my job had changed. It had come from knowing about the job to knowing the job. The relationship made a difference. Now, ownership and relationship speak primarily about the hired hand and the shepherd. And yes, we're called to be shepherds too. But my last point is it from the viewpoint of the sheep, or better known as us. But why would we trust Christ as our shepherd? In the gospel, we heard Jesus say that he is a good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. We are his. That would be a reason to trust him. And earlier in the same gospel, he stated, how the sheep know my voice. They know the voice of the shepherd and follow him. That too can help us trust him. But the main reason I think we should trust him is because he loves us so much that he freely chose to lay down his life for us, his sheep. And not just as one flock, but for each of us, for you and for me personally. He calls us each and every one by name. And he would leave the 99 of the flock to come and get you, to get me. And as a shepherd, he feeds us, and he feeds us with his own life, his body and blood in the Eucharist. Why would we not trust someone who loves us so much? Well, due to our fallen nature, I'm sure it can be easier said than done, I remember talking, okay, if I'm honest, I was arguing with my mother as a teenager. Now, honestly, I don't remember what we, she wanted me to do and what her will was for me then, but I am sure it was for my own good. I remember asking her why she wanted me to trust her and do what she wanted me to do, and she said it was because she loved me. She was wanting and willing something good for me. But I was frustrated. I wanted to do my own thing, my will, not hers. And the not-so-nice son just blurted out to her, I wish you didn't love me so much. And if I'm honest, if we're honest, is that not what we say to God when we don't want to follow his will? Why, oh why? It might be because we don't know him as well as we ought to, or we don't always recognize his voice. If that's the case, let's do something to change that. I'd like to f I'll give you a couple of quotes from one of the early church fathers, St. Jerome, and they probably will help us point us in the right direction. First quote, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. We need to know scripture to know Christ. And the second, when we pray, we speak to God, but when we read scripture, God speaks to us. And that is why one of our Lighthouse core values is to be scripture soaked. By spending time reading and contemplating scripture, we will get to know Christ more intimately, trust him, and learn to recognize his voice from that of the wolves. As we know him, and not just know about him, we know his voice, we will find it easier to follow him. Then in confidence, we can joyfully proclaim that the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want.